Every Saturday night, we have incredible guests coming into Saturday Night Show from Sports Legends. This is Patrick Njiro with John Karani, JK, on Saturday Night Show. Media icons. Hi, this is Mado, M-A-D-D, Mad with a double D, with John Karani, JK, on KBC English Service. Music and entertainment. Pili Pili, a.k.a. Masala, a.k.a. Mr. Ho Ho, on Saturday Night Show, SNS. Pili Pili, eh? This is John Katano of The Mushrooms on Saturday Night Show, SNS, with my namesake, JK. Don't miss the next exciting name to drop by on Saturday Night Show, SNS, with John Karani. Saturday from 8.30 p.m. Hashtag SNS KBC. SNS, SNS, guest of the week. Guest of the the week SNS on KBC English Service. Good evening. Welcome to Saturday Night Show SNS right here on KBC English Service. Tonight, tukona mzee wa kazi mwenyewe, Fred Obachi Machoka, the blackest man in black Africana. I'm a black Africa. <laughs> He's our guest in tonight's edition of Saturday Night Show. Fred Obachi Machoka, welcome to Saturday Night Show. Asante sana, watu, JK. Watu wengi wamekuulizia sana. <laughs> wanataka kujua story yako sada because you know when it comes to entertainment industry broadcasting industry and uh, mambo ya muziki yeah. well you are one in a million sasa labda utueleze hii maneno kwanza yes. we ulianza ukiwa shule because most people say ni mimi nilianza maneno nikiwa shule Uh, ni kama nilikuwa shule kusema ukweli kwa sababu mimi uh, nilianza nikiwa kijana lakini sio sana vile eti kwamba nilikuwa shule kwa sababu hata nikiingia kwenye hii fani ya utangazaji nilikuwa tayari nishafanya kazi katika kikosi cha polisi eh, kwenye hii eh, signals department communication eh, upande wa mawasiliano mm. eh, na ni kaudumu i think like uh, four years plus so you were yes. soldier yes kidogo yeah. eh, kwa muda mfupi almost five years no wonder yeah. the discipline that you have <laughs> eh, in everyday life eh? yes so at <laughs> least uh, that uh, stint uh, which you did uh, as a soldier shaped you in, in a way actually. oh yes oh yes uh, i tell you working for disciplined forces ni kitu muhimu sana inakufundisha mengi inakufundisha uvumilivu inakufundisha nidhamu uh-huh. inakufundisha pia uh, how to be strong in terms of you know they say you don't know how strong you are until you are in danger yes then is when you ndio unakuja kugundua kumbe niko na nguvu kiasi so uh, serving in the forces especially in the northern frontier district nfd that time and uh, and and a very very Uh, tough conditions uh, fighting the shifter war uh, was not exactly an easy thing so later on uh, the way god works i had an opportunity to then uh, uh, join uh, the broadcasting industry Now, you see, by what, default okay yeah because i'm i'm seeing a soldier yes and microphone yes okay both of them unashika yeah. lakini uh, soldier bunduki yes. microphone kutangazia yeah. watu yes. Yes. those are, are they are, they are a bit on the extreme eh? yes uh how did it how did you transition from being a soldier now yes. mpaka nyuma ya microphone kutangaza you know in, in 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 first in the in the forces i was in the signals department signals department is where we were trained how to communicate so nilikuwa na microphone yangu e, tulikuwa tuna tunatembea na communication gadgets huko yes. mstuni eh ya kuhakikisha kwamba eh, tunaweza kuwasiliana for rescue in case tunashambuliwa na mambo kama hayo and uh, we had also been taught a few tricks in communication kama vile uh, un, vile unaweza kuwasiliana na watu ukitumia ta peke yake tochi uh, tochi yani kwa mbali tu signals za tochi uh-huh. unaweza kuonyesha uki, u, u, unaweza kuzungumza na tochi ukitumia tochi na mwenye anaelewa mambo ya signals akaona kwamba ulikuwa unamwambia nini na pili tulikuwa tumefundishwa pia namna ya kutumia kitu tunaita Morse code. Morse code ile sauti unasikia. 
yeah that kind of communication ilikuwa inaitwa Morse code sijui kama hivi sasa bado ipo ama haipo sasa nikashiriki katika shindano la kipindi ambacho kilikuwa kinajulikana kama Sanyo Juu Sanyo oh, Tops Sanyo Juu Sanyo Tops a very popular program uh, yes uh, so i participated in that uh, a, co- a radio competition and uh, i won a radio but i was in Wajir Uh, in the northern frontier so when i got leave i came over to nairobi to pick my radio uh, from the producers of the radio show there was saidio marika songo there was a guy called mohammed rama and there was uh, uh, a gentleman called uh, uh, peter colmo who yes. was uh, the owner of the company that was producing the commercial show so when uh, i came for my radio which was a gift a prize the producer told me i think you got a nice voice man i think we uh, would you be interested in broadcasting i said yes but i'm a soldier how can i do that? <laughs> they said no you know it is uh, we 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 pay. i asked do you pay for for these uh, services they said yeah we pay not much but we do pay yes. so i said sure i can do that but i'm a soldier so they said no what we can do Uh, is we can give you just a five minutes uh, segment within yes. the 30 minutes so radio show out. so we try out yes. and so they gave me a five minutes segment which they called a uh, masignola uh, a masignola yes uh, this was uh, i think they were using it as uh, an endorsement because we were the people in communication so they used me as a person in communication to endorse the electronic products yes. sanyo sanyo, uh, sanyo electronics. electronics so they said masignola ndio wanaelewa ni radio ipi iliyo bora zaidi wow you understand yes. so they used me that time while i was still in the forces that was actually 1975 Now that's when the bug started biting you. That is when the bug started biting me. Then uh, after one year in December 1976 uh, after doing uh, this five minutes uh, segment. Uh, segment I felt ah, siniwache tu nifanye full time kazi yes. ya utangazaji. So that is when I resigned from the forces and got into this thing. Okay now Sanyo Ju Sanyo Top. Yes. That was one hell of a program. It, I mean it revolutioned the way people are doing radio programs especially commercial programs on radio. Yes. I mean how how are you doing it because basically it's like you are way ahead of your time. To be honest uh, uh, I, I I was not the pioneer of the show. I I did join the 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 the, the, the crew that was doing the show. Uh, that uh, led by Saidio Marika Songo my mentor the guy i really respected a lot uh unfortunately Saidio Marika Songo uh passed on i think it was uh, uh, he, he, he got sick i think it was tb which yeah. was untreatable that at time, that time yeah and when he passed on then uh, Mohamed Rama and myself continued to do the show. Later on Mohamed uh, moved to the offices to do proper uh, editing and other things so I remained as the voice of Sanyo. And that is when uh, we continued to push the brand which was number 3 behind Philips so and the national national national, national panasonic radios. yes uh, national panasonic uh, philips was the leading brand uh, followed by national Pan- panasonic but in three years we put sanyo in the pedestal and it's never looked back for years uh, sanyo was the name to go for if you wanted to buy a radio or a record player or a, a cassette recorder that time Okay so uh what was the reaction of um basically your parents because uh au wanajua umeenda jeshi yes all of a sudden tena wanakusikia umeanza kutangaza kwa radio <laughs> eh? so i mean did they sit you down wakasema sasa tena umeanza mambo ya ya kuongea kwa radio nini mambo ya jeshi ilienda wapi 
Unajua some of us uh, tulizaliwa huko kijijini. Yes. So the moment uh, my father was a simple teacher, my mother a housewife and uh, literary uh, I was like one of the first people from the family. I'm the fourth in the family of 10. Uh, but I was the first one now to get to the city. So uh, it, it was like you must know what you're doing. Uh -huh. If you can survive in the city, uh, you must know what you're doing. And the fact that uh, when I was on air now, uh, you mentioning my name, it also percolates right into the village yes. where my my parents were they felt it was an upgrade <laughs> <laughs> so they were okay with that they were okay with that okay. yes now there was a name the blackest man yes. in black africana yes i mean basically hiyo ilikuwa ni kama sasa imekuwa ni wewe yes uh, how did it come about i mean first it was the it was t b m i b a yes. the blackest boy in black africa yes. that is how i used to call myself and uh, a lot of people really wonder why because i'm not i know i'm black but not that black Definitely. Uh, as to be the blackest yes uh, when i was uh, young in, in primary school uh, we, we we used to see teachers and indeed even society uh, insulting people who are black mtoto wa kike sana sana akiambiwa you are black you, you ugly black girl yes wengine wanatoroka shule even boys they used to run away because they say daddy me i was told i'm black and yeah. ugly so you find they run away from school and this thing didn't sound right for me because i felt being black is not a curse it is just a color like any brown person yes then girls during my time i don't know now I, they have upgraded that they used to use ambi, ambi. extra yes and you know a talk. powder yeah. and a creams that made their their complexion lighter so that they could appeal to men and you know boys and th th this to me uh, wasn't just right it showed like being black is also tantamount to being ugly ugly yeah so having gotten an opportunity to be on air i thought it is important to tell people without telling them that being black is indeed beautiful yeah it's okay it's okay to be black so i coined that slogan the blackest man in black africa meaning i was proud yes. to be black this is sns saturday night show with john carney jk on kbc english service welcome to saturday night show sns right here on kbc english service tonight Tuko na mzee wa kazi mwenyewe Fred Obachi Machoka the blackest man in black africana I'm a black africa <laughs> He's our guest in tonight's edition of Saturday night show You had a studio also called F35 FM FM35 yes. a production studio yes a production house yes basically you were doing commercials and also you started uh, delving into the world of um, entertainment in terms of bringing artists Yes. into the country yes. how di how how did you start that i i don't know i mean i i, I was just trying out how to survive you know, your <laughs> survival instincts uh, come in uh, various shapes and sizes and ways uh, i felt that if i did commercial broadcasting got some people to come and uh, and pay for air time you know for their products to be to be to be to be advertised on VOK and later KBC I could make some money on the side so in 1988 when I was 35 years old I decided to form a company called FM Fred Machoka 35 at 35 yes. so I called it FM 35 Promotions Limited 
and that is when I started uh, now creating radio shows like Ugua Pole na Luko Z. I did shows uh, Sportsman Nisawa Hasa. I did shows Sengenge ni Ngombe. I did many shows. I can't remember. About 20 different sponsored radio shows for my clients. But uh, like you say, the bug of entertainment has never left me because I love music. I've been promoting music all my life. Uh, because even Sanyo Ju, Sanyo Tops was a program that specifically promoted Sanyo products, but also uh, promoted music because I, I did top 10 show. So I used, you know, during our time, we could go to various places, you know, Asanans, yes. uh, Melodica, uh, Canindo's Place, many other places uh, where music was music outlets where they used to sell music and check with them physically on their sales uh, uh, returns which songs were selling well yes and then now we compile a list of the top selling hits and those are the songs that we then could Daniel play tops. on radio yes so uh, i have loved music for a long time now you started bringing the artists from outside. Yes, yes. To come into the country. Yes. We Some of the big names that you've actually worked with, uh, maybe you could give us uh, just a In my life, to be honest, there there have been many artists that are that I have interacted with uh, at at close uh, at close range, people like uh, Mze Franco and TPOK yes. Jazz, uh, Tabule I've uh, interacted with Yvonne Chaka Chaka, yes, from the down princess south. of uh, South Africa. I've interacted with uh, Anna Muale, uh, the girl, beautiful girl from Zambia. Zambia. I wish I could get to see her one more time. Yes. I really love that girl because she is the epitome of entertainment. Yes. I don't know where when she went. When on stage. Yes, when on stage. She's pure dynamite. Yes. Then, then, uh, then I've interacted with people like uh, Yellow Man, King y Yellow. Yeah, the Reggae Man. Yes. <laughs> uh, I uh, who else? Uh, uh, Lucky Dube. I met. Ah, the late Lucky uh, Dube. Yes, I have uh, met. Uh, I have interacted with uh, with uh, Barry White, the King of uh, yes, Soul the, from the from, one with that deep voice. Yes. Uh, who else? Uh, Kanda Bongo Man, of course. Okay, maybe you I could tell have, us. Uh, you, uh, yes. Chala Mwana. I've met Kenny Rogers. Maybe you could tell us yes. about <laughs> Kanda Bongo Man because you have a very interesting story you were telling me earlier on about yeah. uh, how basically you managed to bring Kanda Bongo Man into the country when he was at his peak. Uh, Kanda Bongo Man uh, uh, was a very elusive uh, artist because uh, in the 90s when I was doing uh, music time on KBC, yes, yes. which was almost like a cult. Music time had a cult been, following. Yes. It was really I've yet to see a, a show, a TV show that everybody beats, waited for every yeah, week. Yes, uh, <laughs> it was it was the thing. It was it was re a religion, literally, and uh, so we 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 uh, in nine. In the 90s, Kanda Bongoman was really big. He's, he had just released his music, Lisa, Inde, Inde Moni, uh, you know, uh, Lela Lela. Yes. Tough, Sukus kind of uh, songs that were in a beat called Kwasa Kwasa. Kwasa Kwasa, yes. So, a promoter from Congo called uh, Tamukati Ndongala. Is now deceased. May God rest his soul in eternal peace. Uh, had come to Kenya and then he came to see me. Uh, so we talked, and then he was uh, he was interested in us bringing a musician, uh, a, a group of musicians, uh, ladies only, called uh, Taz Bolingo. So I listened to the music of Taz Bolingo and I told him, no, I think you are, you are going to waste money here. So we were in my office, uh, Lenana Road that time, and we were watching TV and there was uh, this uh, Kanda Bongo man 
uh, on Utna's show. Yes. Performing in Perth, Australia. And I told him, that is the man that needs to come to this country. He said, are you sure? I said, I am positive. I am the one who serves the Kenyan population with music. Yes. So when I tell you this is the artist to bring, I know that that artist will sell. So I then told him, he said, I know Kandabongo man. I said, if you know him, go for him. He said, okay, I'll go to Congo, then I can find out. I said, no. Don't go back to Congo. Uh, that guy is in Australia. Go to Australia. Go to Australia. So the guy bought a ticket from Nairobi to Perth, Australia, went to the hotel where Kanda Bongo Man was performing, and signed a contract in Australia the, for Kanda Bongo Man to come and perform in Kenya. He called me from Australia. He told me we have signed a contract, but Kanda Bongoman has to go back to Paris and then he will be coming in a month's time. So he flew, I told him to fly back to Nairobi. We talk. When he came back to Nairobi, we agreed with my producer, the late Isaac Barrow. Oh, yes. Uh, may God rest his soul in peace too. Great young man. I, we agreed with him that for it to be credible that Kanda Bongoman is coming because a lot of promoters had indicated that they were bringing Kanda Bongoman, they talk about it, and then nothing happens. Yes. So I said, for it to be credible, we, someone needs to go and interview. No, and first, Barrow said, I wish Kanda Bongoman could call us. We talk we, on, we on, on, on phone. I said, no. We have to make an effort to go to Paris and interview Kanda Bongo Man in Paris. So I told Samkati, you raise some money, I'll raise a bit. So that both of you could go to Paris. So that one of us could oh, go. He said, him, he's going back to Congo. Oh. I told him, I'll go to Paris. So I left for Paris to go and interview Kanda Bongo Man. Arriving in Paris, it was Easter. I found Kanda Bongoman had left Paris for a town 400 miles away called something like Sens. And, and he here was, you are in Paris. And here I am in Paris. I don't speak French. I don't, I don't know the town. And it's Friday. So and he's supposed to come back when? He's supposed to come back on Monday. So you have the whole weekend. I looked at myself. I said, I can't survive here like this. Without seeing anybody till Monday, it's, it's not possible. <laughs> Logged in my room now. Great mix of music <laughs> on SNS Saturday Night Show on KBC English Service. <laughs>